QuickBooks Online 2024 journal entry form. Get ready because we're moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening our reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side. We're in the favorite reports. Going to right-click on the balance sheet and open link in a new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss. Open link in the new tab. Scrolling up to the middle tab up top that has been opened. Closing the hamburger. There's our balance sheet. Tapping to the right. Closing the hamburger, there's our profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Going to the first tab, that's the setup process we do every time. Data input in the first tab, looking at the result of that data input to the tabs to the right. Selecting the drop down, we've been looking at the cycles, customer cycle, vendor cycle, and then we jumped over here to the other forms, which are forms that we used quite often they're used often and therefore are in the area where we have the normal data input forms but they don't quite fit exactly into a cycle this time we're going to look at the journal entry form note that we want to keep separate in our mind the concept of recording a journal entry and entering a journal entry form in other words most of the forms that we have looked at within the cycles invoices receive payment expense bill form and so on will record a journal entry in the sense that when we do the data input for these forms they will have an impact on the financial statements and possibly related reports balance sheet and the income statement or profit and loss at least two accounts will be affected we can represent the impact on the financial statements with debit and credit format or with just an increase or decrease kind of uh, description of the accounts or the transaction or journal entry that will be happening when we enter these forms. When we use a journal entry form specifically, that means we're gonna use a form that will be in the format of the debits and credits, meaning we're gonna assign the transactions directly to the accounts without the use of some other form. If you have an accounting background from a school background or a textbook, then you've probably first learned transactions from a journal entry standpoint. You start to learn the debits and credits for each of the different types of transactions. And if you're then moving into a QuickBooks area, then you have to be careful not to use the journal entry form when it's not necessary, when there's another form that you could use. So remember the general idea here would be that you want to use the forms in the cycles if there's a form to use and then only when there's not a form to use or you have some special use like adjusting entries at the end of the period do you enter the transaction simply with a journal entry that doesn't mean that you don't use your debit and credit knowledge you do because you're going to be able to understand better if you know debits and credits or you know accounting double entry bookkeeping well then you'll be able to understand what these forms are actually doing you'll be able to visualize what the impact on the financial statements uh, will be better however if you're going to record a sale you want to do it with an invoice rather than a journal entry for example because you want to be able to track the invoice in the customer center uh, over here which you won't be as easily able to do uh, if you enter basically a journal entry so when would you use the journal entry then? You might use it for a transaction that doesn't happen uh, periodically. So all these transactions in the cycles are the ones that happen periodically. If something happens quite often, you would think there would be a form for it so that QuickBooks can standardize it. We can make the data input as easy as possible so that someone doesn't need an accounting background to do the data input of a, of a particular form, even if it's fairly complex such as an invoice that deals with uh, inventory, for example. So then if it, if, if it doesn't fall into one of these forms, the transaction you're looking at, I would always ask the question, is cash affected? If cash is affected, then you would think that you could use a, an expense form or a deposit form or enter it into the check register, which would be an expense or deposit form. And if there's, if there's no cash affected, then you might enter a journal entry. For example, a transaction for the purchase of equipment that that you paid for 
uh, with a loan, meaning you financed the purchase of the equipment. We don't purchase equipment all the time, so it's not a normal transaction over here, and we didn't pay cash for it, so we're not gonna use an expense form, so you might end up using a journal entry uh, type of form in that case. You would also use journal entries possibly for year-end or period-end adjustments. And using journal entries is on purpose at that time because that'll give you a differentiation between what you're doing in the adjusting process and what you're doing in the normal kind of bookkeeping process. And that's actually nice and helpful for when you sort your uh, reports. So let's give an example. If I go into a journal entry, we can see that we have uh, uh, just a journal entry layout. And let's say we made this as of 010124. And so it's gonna number the journal entry up top, and then I'm gonna enter the transactions directly to two accounts. It's gonna do so with debits and credits. If you don't know debits and credits well, uh, if there's only two accounts affected, then you can kind of test out the debits and credits. And if you go the wrong way, you can switch it. If you get to a longer transaction, like a, like a simulated a payroll transaction or something, then it can get quite complex to, if you don't know the debits and credits. But we can also enter the journal entries into registers, which we might look at shortly as well. So let's say that we were going to uh, purchase equipment or something and we financed it. So we're gonna say, let's say it was equipment that we're purchasing and I'm just gonna make a new account for it. Actually, let me say equipment and I'm gonna make a new account. I'll just make a new account because I'm gonna say it's a fixed asset account. So I'm gonna say it's a fixed asset account and it's gonna be